All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Tyler with Boost Junkie Media. And today I thought I would just bring you a little video um, talking about data logging a little bit with the S550. Um, I know that there are some people out there, um, even ones that I you know, know personally that have mentioned in the past that they struggle with the data logging and you know what they're looking for. And so I thought I would go over that just a little bit with one of my logs and just kind of show you a little bit about uh, the HP Tuners VCM scanner um, and what you're looking for and what the numbers should be when you're you know looking at a log. Maybe you're gonna send the log off to your tuner, but you still wanna be able to look at it and understand what's going on. So that's kind of what I'm gonna show you here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we've got our, our windows here. We've got our VCM scanner uh, installed. We're gonna go ahead and load him up here. And once it loads, you're gonna get um, a screen that looks very similar to this. Now yours may look a little different. I have modified mine to fit, you know, to tailor my needs. Um, so yours may look different, but it should look similar. And so what you're gonna do is, the first thing you need to do is load up your channel configuration. So when you have a tuner, they will probably provide you a channel configuration, which is gonna have all the channels in it that they wanna see. And so when you data log for them, they have parameters they wanna see so that when you send the log off, they can just open that configuration and they'll get all the same stuff that you were logging or you were seeing. Um, and so I've got two different ones. I've got one from Palm Beach when I was tuned by them. I've since switched to Daryl Wingard. So I've got one from him too. So to load those up, what you do is you get the file from the, the tuner and then you go to your Windows machine and you're going to put it in your in your documents directory. There should be a folder called uh, HP Tuners. And in fact, I'll just show you here. So open channel config. And so it's going to be uh, your documents, HP Tuners, VCM scanner, channel config. And you should get, um, you should have your file listed in here. So the one I want is this guy right here. This is the newest one from Daryl. So I'm going to open him up. And when you do that, this channels bank here on the left should change. I already had it loaded, so mine didn't change, but you should see a change in that. And then the next thing you wanna to wanna to do is you wanna load up your log. So you're gonna open, you know, click this little folder here that has a little lightning bolt, open log file, find your, you know, find your file and open it. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this is gonna populate here with data. And all of your stuff over here is, or not being all of it, but a lot of it's going to populate with, with colors and numbers and data. Um, so let's go to the bottom here. So this this little slider here is a slider for your, your poll. Um, so basically, uh, this whole log here that I have is a minute 20. And you can see here at the very beginning, like none of this is, is needed data. This was just me cruising to the spot. So right here in this little slider, you see this red line going up, that's the pole. That red line is your RPM, and it's doing that to show you where your pole is. So you wanna slide this over so that that's in the middle, and then you can click in your strip chart here, and as you click around to different positions, you're, it's gonna load the data from that position in the log here and up here into your gauges. And so what you want to do, what I typically do, is I kind of place it right before where my pull starts. And I'll go through these numbers here for you, what we've what we've got here. Um, so you've got speed, uh, RPM, I'm sorry. You've got your vehicle speed. You've got your injector duty cycle, which is on here. We don't really need it in this for my setup. In theory, you could use that to determine you know, if you're running out of injector or running out of fuel system, whatever. Um, but I know I'm not there because I'm only on 93 pump gas. Uh, so I, I don't really need that, but you can leave it there. We've got accelerator pedal. We've got MAF, which is in pounds per minute. We've got our IAT, which is intake air temp. We've got our knock retard, our spark, which is uh, ignition timing. We've got our wideband equivalence bank one, wideband equivalence bank two, We've got our commanded wideband bank one and commanded uh, wideband bank two. And then down here are our long and short-term fuel trims. 
And so what, you, what you're looking for here is basically these numbers, and all of this is also listed over here in your channels chart. Um, if, the, if it's not in your channels here, then you won't be able to see it over here. And so when you're data logging, you have to make sure that all the stuff you wanna see is loaded into your channels here, which is why it's very critical that you do that beforehand or, or load the, the channel configuration that your tuner sent you, like I already mentioned. It's gonna chart everything that they need to see. Um, and it does, just so you know, like the more things you log, the, the lower the resolution is gonna be. The, the computer can only do so much. And for everything that you add in the channels to log, it will actually reduce the, the logging rate or the frequency of the logging for everything. So there is technically a max number of things that you want to, to log, less is better. Um, but you also wanna get all the data you need, so. All right, so what I typically do when I'm just looking at a log just to kind of see is I go right here and I look at my, I find out what my accelerator pedal is. And as you can see, I've got two things here that are both green. That's not really great. So in fact, what we'll do is we'll change that real quick. So we're gonna to go to chart layout. Uh, to get there, you're gonna right click in here, go to charts layout. And then in this panel, I wanna change, we're gonna change accelerator pedal. So I'm gonna select accelerator pedal here on group one. I'm gonna go down here to this green color and we're gonna pick a new color. Let's pick, um, maybe let's pick a yellow color here. Let's just go with that. And then we're gonna click save, all groups, select your save file. Okay, so now our accelerator pedal is in yellow. yellow. And so you can see here on our strip chart, you can see the yellow um, you can see right here where I was bringing up the RPM, get ready to hit my, get my pole. And then the number jumps up right here. That's where I get into the throttle. So I usually kind of put my position or my cursor right before that. And once you've got it in position, you can actually use your arrow keys. You can see there, the numbers are going up slowly. I'm arrowing to the right to do that. Every time I arrow over, I'm going to a new frame, um, in the, in the log and, every frame is ex extremely small amount of time. And so what I wanna do is I wanna keep arrowing over and I'm watching my pedal percent, I'm watching my RPM, um, and I wanna see where the pull starts. So basically what I'm really looking for is the, the pedal percent. When you see this number here, accelerator pedal, start climbing, start going up quickly, that's when I'm, you know, my foot is going to the floor. And so we're 21% right now, I'm arrowing over, and there we go, it's starting to climb. So my foot now is rolling into the throttle, going to the floor. So from here on, what we're watching is, we're watching our um, watching our RPM, we're watching our MAF, we're watching our knock retard, our overall spark, and all of our wideband stuff. Fueling, yeah, you can, you know, you want your fuel trims to be, they always say plus or minus 5%, but really at this point, like what you really want to monitor is your, your wideband or Lambda number. And for anyone who may not know what Lambda is, Lambda is just a, a number of uh, a change from a static number. So static in this case is Stoich. Stoich could be, you know, it's 14.7, 14.6. I've heard 14.1 because of E10 fuel. Whatever it is, it's, that's the stoichiometric ratio of that particular fuel. And so anything less than lambda one is gonna be richer than Stoich. Anything more than lambda one is gonna be leaner than Stoich. The number with the Coyote stuff that I typically kind of see is 0.78. Um, so that's typically where, around there where you're gonna see anything less than 0.78 is gonna be richer. Anything more than 0.78 is gonna be a little bit leaner. Richer is typically better. Um, you know, obviously you don't wanna to be too, too rich, but a little rich is safe, generally speaking. Um, especially with the, the the stock bottom end stuff, because the the pistons don't love the don't love detonation. They don't love to be rattled. You rattle the piston a little bit, and that's when you start getting into trouble with ring lands breaking and things like that. So um, so we're we're gonna watch for those things. Okay, so we're gonna keep trucking through our log here, and you can see we're our accelerator pedal is still going up, and I'm just arrowing over. We're gonna go all the way through the pole here. Um, all the way to red line, and I'm just gonna show you the numbers 
And so you can see our accelerator pedal is still going down and you can see like in real time, it probably only took, you know, a second for the my foot to hit the floor. But you can see how long in the log here, it makes it feel like that it took me to get to the floor. And that's just because like I mentioned, every, every increment in the log is such a small minuscule amount of time that it, it can be deceiving. It can make you think that an event or something is, is, is happening over a long period of time. And it's not, it's, it's just, it's a, a split second in time that something is happening. So just be careful with that, with the log, with the, the chart, with the graph. Okay. So we're trucking, trucking through accelerator pedal still going up. Uh, you can see our math number here is climbing. So math is your airflow through the mass air meter. So as the, you know, supercharger starts spinning faster and faster and faster, it's going to start compressing the air and shooting more air into the motor. The mass air meter is going to read that. Um, so we're going up. So our accelerator pedal is almost to down all the way to the floor. We're still trucking. Accelerator pedal. Okay. Still going, still going, still going, still going. Okay. All right. That is pretty much wide open. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know on this particular poll if I didn't quite have the accelerator to the floor or if my car is reading a little bit less than 100 for whatever reason. I'm not sure. I'll have to look at some of the logs. But for all intents and purposes, this is 100%. 98, 100, it, it doesn't matter. The, the throttle blade is open. The supercharger is making boost. The RPMs are coming up. Like, it's it's wide open. Um, and so right here is where we're really going to start looking at the numbers. And you can see already... I've, uh, we've, we've pretty much hit the numbers I mentioned. So our commanded, so what the tune is commanding actually is 0.76. What the wide bands are actually reading here is 0.78. Sorry, just a second there. I just made a boo-boo. Let me start over here. I zoomed in on the graph and uh, <laughs> messed that all up. And it's easier just to reshow you here, just to start over. Okay, or it's not. All right, well, now I get to show you how to use zoom. All right, so I zoomed out is what happened. So I guess I'll show you that real quick. So up here at the top, you've got zoom in and zoom out. So on your strip chart here, you can use those to zoom and zoom in or zoom out to get a, a, a broader or a more minuscule section of the log. Um, so let me, sorry, let me go back to where I was here again. So, okay, so accelerator pedal, we were right here where we just hit 100% throttle. Um, right, okay, we're gonna call that 100%. So back to where we were. So we're trucking through our RPM here, we're trucking through our log, and you can see RPM is climbing, our vehicle speed is climbing, our math pounds per minute is climbing, so we're wide open, we're making some jam, and we're gonna look down here at our knock retard. So knock retard right now is minus 4.2. That's where you wanna be. You wanna be either zero knock or negative. Negative knock is actually adding spark. So the spark right now that the car is actually seeing is 21 degrees, and that's only because we're not really making any real big power yet. You'll see here in a, in a minute once we start climbing through the RPM and start making more power, that's gonna come down because it's a 93 octane car. Um, but we're gonna keep trucking through. RPM is climbing, mass air meter is climbing, vehicle speed still climbing, and there comes our knock retard. Knock retard is coming down. Actual ignition timing is coming down because the ignition timing is directly related to the knock retard. And that's normal. You're going to see that. Like I said, you just don't want to see positive knock retard. Look at our wideband. Our equivalence is 0 0.78, 0 0.77 lambda. Our commanded is right there, right in line. And you can see that here in the chart. If you look right here, you can see all of our colors, red, purple, and our two whites. And again, these should be different colors. Um, so I'll probably modify that later, but for now it's fine. Um, you can kind of see that right here in this chart where the, the number or the lines are all together. That's what you kind of want to see. You don't want to see your commanded way different typically than your actual. Uh, that would kind of pinpoint to a problem. Um, so we're trucking through. 
So Nocritard is still looking good. Spark is coming down as Nocritard comes down. Um, Lambda is still looking good. 0 0.77, 0 0.78. We're, now we're getting into the you know power a little bit. We're 6,000 RPM. We're hit 100 miles an hour. Our MAF, we're now seeing 60 pounds per minute of air. That's good. IETs are climbing as they will with you know with boost, obviously. So knock retard. So now we're down to negative 0.7 and only 16 degrees of timing. And so we're actually minus 0.7 so that 16 is actually having 0.7 added. So our actual spark right now is 15.3 degrees of timing, and the, the computer is adding 0.7 to get us to our 16 uh, degrees of ignition timing. Um, and that's fine. Again, you don't, you know, a 93 car, you don't want a lot of ignition timing. If you start running E85, then you can up the timing a little bit. Uh, it's more, you know, more detonation resistant than 93 is. Um, so that, that's why the ignition timing is low. You're going to see that across the board with a 93 car. Uh, and so we're going to keep trucking and we're, you know, 6,500 RPM here, 68, 69, 70 pounds per minute of air. Everything looks good. Knock retard is still fine. Spark is still fine. Wideband, we're 0.75. You know, that's even a little on the richer side than 78. Um, we're actually commanding 84, but I believe right now we're in an enrichment power demand state. Uh, in fact, we are. You can see it over here in your channels list, power demand enrich. Um, so that's a, an acceleration enrichment to for power. And so that's probably like an adder or a modifier that's going to reduce your actual wideband a little bit over what it's actually um, requesting. And so that's that's normal. Um and so we're trucking through, we're 7,000 RPM. And just, you could also see all these numbers up here in our bar graph. I've got them here. EQ bank one, EQ bank two, commanded, commanded bank one and two. Pedal positions here, advanced timing is here. Knock retard here, you know, all that's um, there as well. So uh, we're gonna keep trucking through, we're trucking through. 7,200, 7,300, we're now up into the 83, 84 pounds per minute of air. Uh, speed, 125 miles an hour. Okay, now notice our knock retard is now down to zero, and we're only at 14 and a half degrees of ignition timing. However, our wideband does look good. We're 0.74, we're plenty rich, that's fine. No problem there. That's nice and safe. Absolutely no issues. Knock retard is staying at zero. Knock retard is staying at zero. We're still in the throttle. Accelerator is here at 98. And here in just a moment. So here you see the RPM are starting to come down. The car is actually starting to initiate a shift uh, to the next gear. Um, and that happens. So you could see right here at, I believe 7,700 is where the shift starts to occur. And so the shift occurs, the RPMs are gonna come way down. Um, vehicle speed is gonna continue to climb, but you could see our knock retard went back to negative. So because of the shift, you know, you're hitting a different spot in the tables and it's gonna change your timing around a little bit. We're still wide open, we're still 98% throttle until right here. So right here, the shift has just basically occurred and I don't need to stay in it, you know, past that. This was just a, a quick one year pull to, for my, for my tuner, Daryl Wanger to, you know, kind of look at everything. And now you can see the pedal coming down and I'm out of the throttle. And, you know, everything in that pole looked good. Uh, wide band was great. Um, Ignition timing looked good. Knock retard never went positive. That's exactly what you're looking for. Um, you can have false knock where even if your knock goes goes positive, um, it can be false. You know the Coyote knock sensors are very sensitive. I believe by default. I think they can be desensitized a little bit. I'm not sure if, if Daryl does that or not. But you can have false knock, especially when you start adding blowers and stuff. 
anything that's metal on metal can can make uh, harmonics that the knock sensors can pick up. So, from my experience, the best way to diagnose that is if if you uh, if you go out and get some octane booster, get some boostane, or get some octanium, something like that, put in the car. Um, if the knock continues, even with you know bumping your your octane up quite a bit, um, then it's probably false knock. If it goes away with the um, octane booster, then most likely it is real knock. So that's what I've always come and done in the past. Um, so that's basically it. That's how you look at your, your RPM sweep. There are some other things over here that I don't have in the strip chart that are over here in the table that you can use, you can look at. Um, like one that you might wanna look at is fuel source here. You can see that at this point in the log, we're exhaust temp and rich, and that's, I believe that's trying to keep the catalytic converters cool. Um, so that's going to add some extra fuel to try to keep them cooled off. Um, at a certain point in the pole, it switches into that fuel source mode. Um, the other thing here you're gonna see is, uh, let's see, where is it? If I can find it here in the, okay, so your torque source, driver demand. Driver demand means basically that the, the throttle, the, the person's foot is what's commanding how much power or torque the engine is making. There are other states where if the transmission is, is you know, there's some strategy to pull power to help save the transmission, it can change the torque source to something to do with the transmission, things like that. Um, so like once you get out of the throttle, you're gonna see it, it's gonna switch here to torque based decel so basically that's as soon as i get out of the throttle and it goes into deceleration mode um, you can see the torque source switches to torque based decel so that can be can be useful um, another one that's interesting here is your knock retard which we talked about well you've got knock correction so you can see with your knock retard being minus 0.5 your knock correction plus is advanced minus is retard so because it's plus, that means just what I've been saying, that it's adding 0.5 degrees of timing, which lines up with what we're seeing here. And as you know, as we switch around here, you'll see those numbers match up. Minus 0.7, adding 0.7. Uh, minus 3.7, adding 3.7. So um, that's kind of useful to see that in, in, you know, in action. Um, You've also got your intake, your VCT stuff down here. So you've got your commanded intake and exhaust cam angles. You know, they should they should be close. Um, if they're not, if it's commanding, you know, um, or sorry, it's called desired here, not commanded, but it's the same thing. Um, if, if it's desiring 13.1 and it's actually at zero, then that probably is, you know, something with your phasers not working. Um, Basically, and then, oh, right here is your fuel pressure stuff. So you've got your, your DI fuel pressure rail. It's commanding, you know, a super high pressure. You should see that. And then at your actual lift pump, there's going to be a certain amount of pressure at the lift pump, uh, which your lift pump, I believe, is your DI pump. That's going to increase the pressure, you know, way up to those astronomical uh, rail numbers of 2,900 PSI. So those numbers should should closely match. You know, if they're, if there's a big discrepancy between those, then there's something going on with fueling. And then down here is your shift mode stuff. So you've got what mode your shifter is in, what drive mode you're in, and then here is your commanded and your actual transmission gears. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of a crash course on, on data logs and just how to read them and, and the numbers that you're looking for. Uh, this log would be, I would consider this a very standard looking, good looking log. Nothing in here stands out at me as being an issue. Um, if you're seeing, you know, other numbers, not what I was kind of showing you here that could point to a problem. And with cars, if you have a problem, like it can cost you some big money. If you have a fueling issue or you have, you know, ignition timing issues or something, uh, you can literally destroy the, destroy the motor. So that's why it's important to be able to look at these and understand what, what it's doing and what it's saying and, and what it all means. So. Um, I did show you a little bit, so you can modify all this stuff. You can modify your, your strip chart down here. 
by clicking on these, you can select the number of decimal points, you know, what parameter you're monitoring. You can change the color like I showed you uh, on your gauges panel up here. You can select your different gauges, what parameter you're tracking. You can give it, you know, limits, min, max, how many decimals you want it to read. Um, and then once you're done, you can just save these things and give them a name and it's going to save that configuration. Um, over here in your channels, you can't add a channel typically unless you are um, connected to the car or you can do this thing. If I close this log out, you can, they have a um, offline vehicle profile editor. So once you're connected to the car, you can come in here and create a vehicle profile and it will save all the parameters that can be used. And then you can, I believe you can load these channels without being connected to the car. I don't have any saved uh, currently. I think that's a newer feature um, that didn't used to exist. So um, yeah, so just, just a little crash course on HP tuners, VCM scanner. Um, I am not a tuner when it comes to HP tuners. I've got quite a bit of experience with it. I've been using it for well over a decade, going back to some uh, you know GM F body stuff. Uh, the Coyote stuff is is way more advanced than, you know, the old push rod stuff. So I haven't really done any tuning with HP tuners, but I do know how to use the logger and how to look at the data and understand what it all means. And that's what you should be able to do. Yes, your tuner needs it, but it's good if you can, if you're going to go to the track and you may not have tuner support, you know, you maybe you don't want to pay for that, you know, track session or whatever, or you just want to be able to do it yourself. Like these are the things you're looking for when you go to the track. Maybe you won't be able to make changes, but at least you can go to the track, make a poll, and if you see something that looks wrong in your log, you know, don't don't keep running the car. You know, yeah, maybe you waste a, a track day or whatever, you know, a forty dollar test and tune session, but that's better than continuing to make poll after poll after poll while the car is going crazy lean and you you melt down the you, know, you melt down a cylinder. Um, so that's, that's the, the tuning and what we're doing with that. Uh, that's how to read those numbers and look at it. So, um, yeah, it's really all I have. I think this probably ended up being a little bit longer than I meant for it to be. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment below. Um, and please, you know, give me, give me a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel, please. Um, there's going to be more content to come with the S550. I'm working on a couple of videos already. And then of course the Fox body is gonna have streetcar takeover, uh, Charlotte coming up here in just a few weeks. So stay tuned to that. And I guess I'll catch you guys on the next video. Until then, keep it boosted.